guys, welcome to this Gold BGJ Instructional. My name is Rory Van Fleet with RBV BGJ, and this is my training partner, Kevin Wong. All right, so all those frame-based escapes are fantastic, but what if we can't get that bottom elbow inside? This is either because our opponent has already kept their knees super tight and has stopped us from being able to get ourselves into the position that we were looking for at the very beginning of this instructional, or they've already started to manage to get a bit more up into a high mount. So, we need to have that top elbow always framing our opponent's hip. But, sometimes we can't get ourselves into this position. Sometimes we're going to be stuck where our opponent gets up a little bit higher, and now my elbow is always going to be on the outside here. This is something that we've got to learn how to deal with because it's going to happen a lot. Right elbow is everything. If I lose that, I'm done. So, what we're going to look to do is start trying to hook our opponent into a half guard. There's a lot of different ways that people teach this. What we're gonna to look to do primarily is shift our opponent's center of gravity forward again so that this leg becomes light. A mistake that people try and do here is Kevin has his hips back like this and then as I'm trying to hook this, whether I'm using flexibility, which even if I can use some flexibility, I have to pull my leg up like this and now my leg is in a uh, improper alignment and so now I'm just trying to, I'm putting a lot of extra strain on my knee and other ligaments so preferably we keep ourselves in a proper position and rather than trying to hook this and force it I'm going to take my hand I'm going to cut down at the ankle as far as I can sometimes you can grip the gi if you had to but look at how his pants are too high up his calf I'm not accessing the lever the end of the lever to his leg so from between his knee to his ankle I want to try and control as close down to his ankle as possible if I try and lift him here no goddamn way but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look to create a bridge and knee him in the butt so that as I do this, his leg becomes light. I do that by shifting his center of gravity into his hands while I'm lifting his leg. I can't lift it here. I bridge and I knock him forward. Now from here in this motion before I recede back, now look at this. Now look how I don't twist my knee at all. It can stay in the strong leg press alignment and curl into his heel. This knee comes up as close to his knee as possible, so that I'm gonna be able to create a fulcrum, a pivot point at his knee to try and lift the knee up like this. I'm keeping this elbow nice and tight to the, uh, his leg still. If I leave it up like this, he's gonna underhook me. And now I'm stuck in just a really bad half guard and he's basically at three quarter mount. What I need is to be doing this and keeping my elbow nice and tight. Now from here, as I have hooked here, I'm gonna to look to create a curl with my right leg as I base off of the mat here, live toes, both feet are in contact with the mat here. So I'm gonna be able to try and lift my knee up into his knee and I'm lifting just slightly. As I do, I'm starting to bring my elbow underneath. I'm just trying to get him out of base with good contact with the ground. So I'm looking at elevating him to here. And then I'm looking at doing another motion here, hip shoveling, out so that now I have my hips underneath his knee. Now it's completely lifted up. Do not take the hand and push here because this creates this open elbow and it's going to make it underhook very easy for him. We're working with our elbows from here. I can frame up here if I want to because I'm not susceptible to the underhook because if he tries to reach for an underhook on me right now, I'm blocking at the shoulder. There's going to be a pummeling battle, but that's totally different. From here, I can hip out one more time and bring my bottom knee in bring this top leg over top to block at the hip. Do not use flexibility, just keep adjusting your hips. If you feel like you need to use flexibility at and, and any time in any one of these moves, usually it just means I just need to hip out one to two more times to just create the more advantageous angle for yourself. Here, knee a bit higher. There, I can't get it inside. I'm cupping them at, down at the ankle and I'm going to bridge and bump him to shift forward from here, hooking, grabbing here. Look at that elbow, nice and tight to his body, nothing for him here. Here, I look to lift it, I start bringing my arm underneath. Guys, if you like deep half guard, if you're more advanced, then this arm is just gonna go underneath and we've got ourselves in deep half guard. That's one of my preferred because now we're able to start changing the battle in our favor. But that's a more complicated guard, and if you don't know it, then we're just going to look to try and get back to a, a complete open guard. From here, I'm hipping out, and if you need to, hip out again. From here, I can take both my hands and frame his hips. 
I just don't frame at the knee because this opens up my elbow and creates this lock bend in my arm. But if I can frame at his hip, here, if he tries to get any kind of control on me, very difficult for him to. And I get myself right back to a complete open guard. One more time, just on this side. Here, bump him, hook, lift. As my hips get underneath them, I can start looking at blocking the cross shoulder, blocking the cross hip, blocking both hips, blocking both shoulders. And now I'm going to look to bring my knee inside and get my legs in front to face a guard. So the frame based escape is not working. We look to access a lever based escape by shifting his leg forward and starting to get him into a half guard. Nothing wrong with just bringing the heel over and getting his leg if you're able to, but you're gonna deal with high level opponents or larger opponents in which that's not gonna be enough. And if your opponent looks to defend the position by changing the angle of the lever, so if I'm here and I'm, he knows that I'm trying to hook this and elevate him, he might try and hide this by opening his knee up and tucking his leg in, so that's very hard for me to get. But as soon as he does this, I'm able to now get my elbow inside. Anytime I'm trying to do this stuff, or even here, if I'm trying to open this up and he opens his knee up, it makes it much harder for me to raise it. See how his knee opens up and relieves that pressure on his leg? However, I'm able to now start using more frame-based escapes. From here, I'm probably still gonna be able to just go straight into hooking him into a half guard. And if it's at the earlier stage, here, where he's gonna be tucking that foot more underneath me and hiding it, this elbow can now get inside. So just lift this arm up. If this knee comes super close to my body, it's not as easy for him to tuck that foot. I'm gonna be able to get at it. But if he wants to try and hide that foot more underneath me, this knee starts to open up. And now we're going back to our frame-based escapes. So I hope you guys find success with this.